It is May 11th, a Friday, and it's time for another update from Prophecy in the News. Uh, before I do today's update, uh, a little word about earthquakes. Uh, in the last uh, 24 to 36 hours, right here in central Oklahoma, we've had three small earthquakes ranging from 2.9 to 3.9 on the Richter scale. Uh, last year we had over 200 similar small earthquakes, uh, and which has given birth to a, a new uh, terminology, the earthquake swarm. Uh, swarms of small earthquakes are being felt uh, all over the United States and right here in Oklahoma as well where uh, in years past if we had one or two or three it was very unusual. All of which brings me to the words of Jesus in Matthew 24 <clears throat> in which he said that one of the signs of the end times would be uh, earthquakes in diverse places. Uh, just a thought. Well, back to Israel. For today's update, you may recall that uh, Monday, Tuesday of this week, the news out of Israel is that Benjamin Netanyahu canceled new elections, which were uh, scheduled uh, for September, and declared a unity government. In other words, uh, he summarily included all of the factions of the Knesset into one single unity government. Here's a dateline Jerusalem in a surprise turnabout. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has decided to cancel the early elections he called just 24 hours before and instead form a unity government with the opposition party Kadima, uh, Israel officials said. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, Monday, Tuesday of this week. The decision shocked much of Israel's political establishment, uh, which was gearing up to dissolve the parliament, the Knesset and launch new elections for September 4th. Well, uh, by joining this government coalition, newly elected Kadima chairman Shaul Mofaz avoids facing voters amid polls indicating that his centrist party would lose more than half its Knesset seats. And so Benjamin Netanyahu, acting quickly, formed this unity government. But everybody's asking why. <clears throat> and in fact, it was a very unpopular move. Uh, here's a, a, a news item from today's Arut Sheva, Israel National News, dated uh, May the 11th. Kadima, a member of the Knesset, Nino Abed Sadse, uh, said today that uh, chairman, party chairman Shaul Mofaz uh, has joined a Bolshevik coalition. Wow. Uh, of course, she's a member of the Knesset in the Kadima party, which was subsumed with Likud. <clears throat> and she's uh, openly critical of this new coalition, saying that uh, Mofaz has joined a Bolshevik coalition. You remember who the Bolsheviks were in 1917 in Russia? Uh, they were the big communist party, which, by the way, overthrew uh, the then existing Russian government. And here's a quote from uh, Nino Abedsad, say, quote, I was in opposition, I followed the rules, I respected them, uh, I would not break them. I respected that I had to sit with the likes of Otniel Shelner uh, from the Likud. In other words, she said, I, I was willing to uh, bite my tongue and go along with what people had to say, and then suddenly I found my beloved Kadima party linked with Likud, which is the conservative party, and she doesn't like it one little bit. Why then, the question becomes, why would uh, Netanyahu have done such a thing? Which brings me to a commentary uh, from syndicated columnist, columnist Charles Krauthammer. Now, Charles Krauthammer is a, a foreign policy specialist. He uh, has a particular understanding of United States-Israeli interactions. And uh, he goes back to May of 1967. Anybody remember the, the 1967 Six-Day War? Well, Charles Krauthammer <clears throat> uh, reminds us of May 1967, the month prior, or the, actually a few days prior to the Six-Day War uh, in 1967. And he says in May 1967, in brazen violation of previous truce agreements, Egypt ordered United Nations peacekeepers out of the Sinai, marched 120,000 troops to the Israeli border, blockaded Eilat, that's Israel's southern outlet, uh, to the world's ocean, 
oceans, and he, they uh, also abruptly signed a military pact with Jordan and together with Syria pledged war for the final destruction of Israel. And what he's talking about here is the Sinai Agreement. Egypt, Jordan, Syria uh, signed a pact agreeing to wipe out Israel. Israel was surrounded and alone, he writes. Previous great power agreements had proved worthless. That is, the United States, Europe had not done what they had pledged to do to protect Israel. So Israel felt abandoned and surrounded. What were they to do? A plan to test the blockade with a Western flotilla failed for lack of participants. Time was running out. Forced to protect against invasion by mass mobilization, life ground to a halt. The country was dying. That is, Israel was dying under a threat from Egypt, Jordan, and Syria, <clears throat> and the lack of support from the West. <clears throat> then on June 5th, Israel launched a preemptive strike on the Egyptian Air Force, proceeded with lightning victories on three fronts, and of course the Six-Day War is now legend. They defeated Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. But here's the point, and Charles Krauthammer wisely points out something that happened that had happened just days prior to the Six-Day War. Israel launched that preemptive strike, but they had also formed a coalition party between disagreeing factions in the Knesset just days before the Six-Day War. And why had they done that? They had done that to solidify for what they perceived was the coming war. And Krauthammer makes the point <clears throat> that Israel is doing exactly the same thing today, forming a uh, more or less hostile uh, government, a more or less hostile coalition government, uh, based upon what they are seeing uh, around them. Uh, we have conditions that resemble those in 1967. The West has not lived up to its promises to support Israel. Israel is surrounded by <clears throat> a growingly hostile Egypt, Jordan, and this time Iran. But Syria has also launched uh, its own war against Israel. And Hezbollah on the northern border of Israel is ready to fire its 40,000 or so rockets. And so we have here a, basically a repeat of history in which uh, Israel is surrounded. Uh, the Western partnership has failed to support Israel in the way that they, uh, they, they should, really, based upon agreements of the past. And Israel perceives that they must act quickly or not at all. And so they have formed a so-called unity government which would put all of the factions of the Knesset <clears throat> under central control in the event uh, that war was launched uh, in one of many, two or three possible ways. Reading here from Arutz Sheva, Israel National News, the United States is worried. Now this, is, this comes out today, uh, May 11th. The United States is worried that Shaul Mofaz and his Kadima parties joining uh, a unity government with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu could result in an attack on Iran's nuclear facilities at any given moment. Uh, I stress those four words, at any given moment. And remember, Israel is doing now what it did in the days and hours before the Six-Day War, forming that unity government, <clears throat> which will enable them to have uh, central directorship in the event of a war. And so uh, let me reread this. The United States is worried that Shaul Mofaz and his Kadima parties uh, joining the unity government with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu could result in an attack on Iran's nuclear facilities at any given moment. U.S. government officials told uh, Arut Sheva that they believe a Likud Kadima joint government could make a decision about an Isra Israeli attack on Iran at any moment, certainly before U.S. elections upcoming in November. Watch the Middle East. Things are happening there that are not regularly reported in broadcast news and even in the newspapers. You have to know where to look to find these things out. We're watching, as always, and we're looking up.